Hey guys, it's Alexander Williamson here with The Secret History Living in Your Aquarium. Today we're going to talk about blue lights. Should you leave them on at night? They're supposed to be the moonlight, right? Well, I have some kind of disturbing news and new research that's come out talking about those lights. And we're going to get into that. Plus, we're going to talk about also, you know, is it good for your fish? When should you use the blue light? What's the blue light even for? When did they come out and why? And then also, what's the deal with blue light and algae? So let's jump into all that right now. All right, guys. So the first thing I want you to understand about blue lights is it's not something that was invented for fish comfort. It's something that was invented by marketing folks, usually uh, around the late 1960s, early 1970s, they started having blue sh shades of light that were available for uh, retail consumption. And the other thing about these blue lights is they used to be incandescent and have some sort of filter over them, like clear cellophane or something like that, and the light would shine through it. But What's more important than the fact that the light is blue in the blue spectrum because it's been shown through something and filtered is, is there any red in the light? Is there extra white in the light? And how much energy, lumens, par, however you want to measure it, how much radioactive energy is in that light? And all those things change depending on the blue light you have. So here, for instance, is a Fluval 3.0, and this is with the blue light setting turned all the way down before it turns off for the night, like off all the way. Now, tonight I've left my blue lights on for the last probably four to five hours just to show you guys a few things. And the first thing I wanna say about blue lights is they're not completely pointless. They come with most lights now that have uh, that you spend any amount of money on, really. They, they seem to be a, a, a fixture in the hobby. And so, what are they for, really? Well, what they're really for is fish transitioning from day to night. Fish are ruled by their endocrine system. What is their endocrine system? Well, it's the part of their body that sends little signals in the form of chemicals saying, fight flight as in run just like we do when we get anxious or stressed or reproduce eat run hide sleep it gives these basic signals and when their hormones and when their endocrine system becomes bombarded with inaccurate signals it builds up over time so it's not like a blue light is instantly going to kill and stress your fish in a week but over the course of time there is potential there but what does the science say? I mean, we know that there's always been a lot of speculation. People say, no, it's fine. No, it's not fine. But, but what does the science say? And the science says that if your light is bright enough that you are making out the fish with human eyes and no aid, that light is very bright to most fish. Now, if they're a nocturnal fish, that may be okay. That may be how you should keep them. For instance, a lot of Corydora species uh, actually thrive at night. They've got their little barbels on their face. And uh, here, let's turn the real light on for a moment. But I do want you to notice this is the moon setting on this Higer light. And there's no white light to it. It's just a few blue and red diodes, but it's still very bright in combination. And it's red and blue light, which combines. And this will still cause algae to grow. The same could be true about your blue light. If it's going through just some sort of filter, then it could actually have white or red light coming through. All these brands vary on how much energy they put off and how much other spectrum of light comes through. Now, the thing I want you guys to notice about these fish, other than they kind of jump when the light turns on immediately, is that they have totally different patterns at night than in the day oftentimes. A lot of times these, if you've seen my channel, they're blood red or blood orange kind of colored uh, ember tetras. Right now they're kind of a pastel pink or peach color, kind of translucent. And a lot of fish will go to that translucent mode at night. One, it takes less energy for them to be kind of showing off and, and, and looking flashy. But two, um, they don't have eyelids <laughs> or any way to tell uh, to say okay I'm going to sleep now so they have to sleep 
when they can. And that's when nature says to sleep. And you are nature as far as your tank is concerned. And while fish don't, most fish anyways, don't sleep in big chunks where, uh, you know, 12 hours of sleep and then 12 hours of awake, most fish actually, when they study their brains under imaging and uh, looking for electromagnetic signals, they find that they sleep for maybe 20 minutes and then they're awake for 10 minutes and they're asleep, quote unquote, for five minutes and then awake for an hour and then asleep for 20 minutes and you know just very irregular usually but they do count on that night time to be the time when they're not being hunted so unless it's a nocturnal fish that's always up at night and that's a lot of catfish and there are some predatory fish other than catfish but usually a lot of your fish with barbels and whiskers are going to be more common uh, guys for the nighttime realm but your shrimp and your snails are other critters that don't even really rely on light that much anymore. They're able to go eat, go find food without any light whatsoever. So they're fine with the blue light, honestly. But when it comes to baby fish, those same signals that the adult fish see that are like, stay awake, stay alert, watch out for predators, in the babies, those cortisols, those stress hormones, are elevated. And when it elevates too high, it taxes their immune system. It's, it, it, it's not designed to work 24-7. In the wild, they don't have to do that. And so a light like this that's bright enough to illuminate your tank, if you turn your phone on or your camera on and you can see movement of your fish and make out your fish with the screen on, and just filming without any special settings just on auto it's too bright the the par or the lumens it's producing is is enough that it's it's actually just light it doesn't matter if it's blue or green or purple um, if it were red it would encourage more algae generally but for the sake of this like i said some lights are from diodes and they vibrate at a specific frequency so what can happen is some brands will actually have a little bit of green, a little bit of red, a little bit of white. And so different colors make up what the light consists of uh, totally. And so there's not one standard either. Like this light's more purplish. So we know there's some sort of red in there. It almost looks like a black light. Whereas this very, very cheap very underpowered light probably would be okay to leave on in that it only illuminates the top part of the water the bottom part of the water you can't really see anything so it's probably not so stressful but unless you have an aquarium that is just loaded with plants and fish hides that are like caves and um, botanical elements and leaves and stones and pleco caves or episto caves or cichlid huts then that light is going to get in their eyes unless you can they can bury their head in the mud or sand or silt and you have a biotope tank they aren't going to be able to say i want to go to sleep so those stress chemicals build up and in the babies they've even detected that baby danios and baby goldfish their eyes don't develop right when they are left in blue light every night their eyes are supposed to get a rest so that their nervous system in their spinal column and the rest of their body can develop and it doesn't get a chance to when they're in the blue light all the time. So you might as well, when you have a blue light like these that's bright enough to see your fish, you literally might as well turn on a, an actual light and just leave it on. If, if you want to see your fish, leave your real light on. So the light was not made for these fish. We've discussed that. It's made for you so you can observe your fish. So if you have nocturnal species or you have a species that you wanna watch at night, then fine, turn off the lights in the room and turn the blue light on, that's fine. But make sure you have a timer or something to turn it off because not only can some of these lights still have enough energy to allow algae to grow, especially in the LED lights, uh, that have a combination of colors being used uh, But they also are going to cause that stress to build up. Well when that stress builds up like we were talking about the fish 
have deformities and they can't see properly when they grow up. And there's actually been a few studies on this in Danios, in the goldfish, and in guppies. They've shown that that stress is enough to cause them to not grow properly. So in this little hatchery tank that I have here, it's really important for me to turn the lights off at night for a good, you know, 10 hours. Um, or whatever around the equator would be the equivalent since most of my fish are tropical and that's 12 hours of dark 12 hours of light approximately or say 10 hours of dark two hours of twilight and dusk and then uh, You know, maybe 10 hours again of of light so you can see though that these little baby fish when they're when they're small the way baby fish grow is they have their eyes that form and then their spinal column and they form those nerve clusters first, like this baby Corydora here. Then they start growing the fins and the other details, the pigment, the markings, and their sensory organs. So the other thing is, a lot of these babies, they don't have eyes that can see in at night to eat, so they need to rest. So their body is optimized to rest at night. Uh, because their eyes aren't useful at night unless they're one of those species that is nocturnal So they just figure I'm gonna shut down and my endocrine system is going to also I won't produce any stress hormones uh, Unless they're needed and since fish sleep in these irregular, you know 15 minutes on 10 minutes off 20 minutes on 30 minutes off uh, cycles their brain activity never actually decreases more than about 20% when they're sleeping. And that's sleeping in quotes, because they don't sleep like we do in those big chunks. But as it's been shown, if it, if it causes enough stress for babies to not grow right, it also anecdotally causes enough stress in the adults for them not to want to breed properly. It throws off their internal clock, just like we have an internal clock. And, you know, at the end of the day, those hormones build up in their body. And when they get rid of them, their, their kidneys and liver handle the, those from building up in their body. But just like in humans, we need to sleep in order to get rid of the toxins in our, in our um, urine, for instance. And so we will sleep and our bladders will filter that. And that's why I know it's kind of gross, but if you get up and go to the bathroom in the morning, it's usually the darkest or most uh, fragrant that you're gonna have all day, unless you're very dehydrated and in the desert later on. So <laughs> I'm gonna tell you guys right now that fish and almost all creatures work the same way where they have a resting period and their organs kick into gear to do filtration, maintenance work and growth while their mental uh, and uh, reactive body, their muscles and the other proteins in their body and nerve cells are not having to use the, the energy that's in their stomach and in their uh, metabolism from eating earlier in the day. So long story short, just turn the lights off. You can leave them on for an hour or two, maybe even three when you're going to bed. Um, and maybe when the lights are coming on, that transitional space actually is nice because if you've ever flipped the lights on and you've got fish hanging out at the top sometimes they'll freak out and they'll jump uh, especially fish that are prone to jumping out of the tank and so I highly recommend you know having that but in studies now they've found that just turning on the normal light uh, incrementally by having a power throttle or by being able to control it on Bluetooth or something if you get any of the Fluval Planet Plus or the Hyger lights or just a lot of lights these days that are anywhere in the medium range price, you'll be able to actually change those settings either with a little remote or uh, on your phone with an app. And just set it to a ramp up of a half hour to an hour. And they find that that actually still creates the exact same hormone release profile that the other um, blue light would. So really the blue light is for not for the fish, it's for us. So it was a marketing tool. Um, it was a gimmick for the most part. And uh, that's still what it is today. And people are just used to having that as part of the kit. So they keep including it. So I hope that after this, you guys will think a little bit about leaving that blue light on all night. Plus if it's a bright enough blue light or it has any other color spectrum, like I said, you could be growing any sort of algae or 
actually worse, the cyanobacteria can grow off of even lower light than the algae and the plants can grow off of. And you don't want that blue-green mold algae stuff growing on your tank if you can help it. It can actually have some harmful effects if it's a certain species. So, as I said, don't let the hormones, the stress hormones, the fight-or-flight hormones build up in your fish, cause them a detriment to their growth and to their reproduction. Have happy fish. Have fish that eat when they're supposed to eat and rest when they're supposed to rest. And, uh, of course, having a planted tank and places for them to hide in case they do want to rest in the day. Because many fish actually do sleep throughout the day in little sessions. Um, sometimes it's micro-sleep, less than five seconds long, and then awake and asleep, awake and asleep. And it's, and it's chosen by how safe they feel rather than the light that's around. So... That's another factor in there, but that's a whole other uh, can of worms. So I hope you guys have learned something. If you did, please hit that like button. And uh, if you want to see more episodes that tell you interesting, weird, freaky, deep dive facts into your aquarium and the creatures that live in it, then go ahead and click that subscribe button. Or maybe even become a member and you can check out some of the scientific articles, news, and behind the scenes stuff that goes on with the channel and uh, do your own research on these things and make your own videos about these things and find out even more information and come back and teach me something cool. All right, guys, have a good one. I'll talk to you next time. Bye.